Joan Jeffries as Marion Kirby, the ghostess with the mostess. Robert Sterling as George Kirby, that most sportive spirit. And Leo G. Carroll, host to said ghosts as... Topper. Kirby. Mr. and Mrs. George Kirby were holding on flight six. Uh, George. Hmm? I can't help thinking I've forgotten something. Like what? I don't know. The, the house. It... Oh, George. I left the electric heater on in the bathroom. It's all right, dear. I left the bathtub running. Hello. <laughs> Here I am. Oh, so you are. You haven't changed a bit. Don't be silly, Cosmo. You've only been away from me for one day. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know... Ah, here we are. Well, that was actually 25 cents thrown down the drain, Henrietta. I didn't need that flight insurance policy after all. But Cosmo, even if the plane had crashed, it wouldn't have done you a bit of good. Well, that's putting it mildly. I mean, what good is it for you to carry the policy? You should have mailed it to me before you took off. Well, a man can't think of everything, my dear. <laughs> Do you mind not doing your stem tires and crystals on my head, sir? I'm terribly sorry. Oh, you, you must forgive my husband. He's rather backward. You must forgive my wife. She's rather forward. Oh, <laughs> Cosmo. Mm, he's cute. Stop enjoying yourself. This is my vacation. Cosmo. Uh, yes, dear? Do you know who that was? No, dear. Should I? It was George and Marion Kirby. And they're the most dissolute couple in the entire community. Really? How charming. <laughs> Let's have them to dinner one night. Not on your life. You mock my words, Cosmo. Those two will come to a sorry end. Oh, probably. I expect they'll have a lot of fun getting there. <laughs> Forget to fasten your safety belt? Oh, what rotten luck. You must be miles from the chalet. How long do you think it'll take us to get back, George? Practically forever, without skis. Isn't that awful? I hate to think of you walking. <laughs> Me? Let me have your skis, darling. Now, now, just, just a minute, young lady. George Kirby, would you actually allow your bride to crunch through 50 miles of deep snow, fighting a blizzard attacked by wolves? I... Listen, Goose, you park yourself right here. I'll scoot down the trail of the ski patrol shack and come back with a first aid sled. Don't you dare leave me. But, darling, I can make it to the shack in 20 minutes. George Kirby, do you see that sign? Well, what about it? Well, suppose I get caught in the avalanche. There isn't going to be an avalanche. Well, then, you stay here and let me ski back to the shack. <laughs> Darling, we're just wasting time. Well, for heaven's sake. <laughs> I've seen a St. Bernard who couldn't carry his liquor. What do you suppose fighting with us, Dr. George? I don't know, but you'll have an awful hangover in the morning. You probably need a little of the hair of the dog. Give him an aspirin. Give him an aspirin? He's supposed to be saving us. Dog, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Don't shout at him. You'll give him a headache. I'll give him a headache, all right. What do you mean, coming on a job loaded to the gills? I've got a good mind to report you to the... What's, What's what? The noise. Going to be in here. 
avalanche, huh? I still say it can't happen. Oh, no? Then what are we doing here under 300 tons of snow? I don't know what we're doing, but let's try and get out of here. Now, 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 don't hop at me, honey. It could only happen once in a million years. Well, anyway, we got back, didn't we? Yeah, we got back, all right. Take a look at yourself. Well, what's the matter? If anyone ever wondered what I saw in you, they'd sure find out now. Brother, you're the emptiest man in town. Oh, you're pretty holly yourself, chicken. Now, look, George, I'm not going to stay here like this. It's embarrassing. I feel undressed. Well... Well, go ahead. Get solid, Jackson. Well, I'll give it a twirl anyway. Hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're, you're squeezing the wrong way. Whoops. Well, anything you can do, I can do better. It works. Yeah, but who knows for how long? What a crummy deal. I'm avalanche yet. Shouldn't happen to a dog. Well, it did. I wonder where Neil is now. Oh, I suppose he's been... Where's who? Neil, the dog, the St. Bernard, Neil. How'd you know his name was Neil? Because that's what I named him. Well, may I ask why you named this hulky, whiskey-sodden beast Neil? Well, I was sitting there just thinking how much that silly dog looks like your cousin Neil. Well, that's reasonable enough. I suppose he's buried under tons of the stuff just like we are. Here, Neil. Yeah, boy. Here, Neil. <laughs> you see? He knows his name. He doesn't know what time it is. You big lush. Well, no use hanging around here anymore. What's going to happen to us, George? Darling, it's already happened. Well, what are we going to do? What can we do? We're dead, aren't we? I guess so. Well, come on. Let's live it up a little. Let's go see how the live people live. <laughs> that was three months ago, Mr. Topper. And they never did find the bodies. Yes, but is all this legal? I mean, how can you sell a house if you can't produce the corpus delicti? Or is it corpi delictus? After all, if all you tell me about the Kerbers is true, they were quite an irresponsible couple. <laughs> they sure were, Mr. Topper. Exactly. And it's just possible they may be off on some merry jaunt somewhere and, and not dead at all. Oh, I don't care if they're dead or alive. They only made the first payment on the house, and our office got orders from the loan company to sell. I see. Then uh, I may safely assume that the house has reverted to this loan shark. Loan company. Quite. And there'll be no question of future litigation. No, none whatever. Uh, would you like to go inside? Well, perhaps we'd better wait for Mrs. Topper. After all, she's the one you've got to please, you know. <laughs> Why, hello, Mrs. Topper. How's no? I just found out from Addie Stevens. Do you know whom this house belongs to? Yes, dear, the loan shop. A uh, loan company. <laughs> it belongs to the Kirby's. But and you know what happened to them? Mrs. Topper... They were supposed to have died in an avalanche, but the bodies were never found. I wouldn't set foot in that house until they bring back the bodies. Uh, it's quite all right, dear. Even if they do show up, frozen or otherwise, they have no legal claim. It's positively ghoulish. I wouldn't set foot in the house. Oh, but Henriette... Don't argue, Cosmo. I wouldn't go in that house, not even if you dragged me. I wasn't planning to. Uh, look, uh, Mrs. Topper... Never. Uh, I'd just as soon live with a skeleton. Now, please, let's not get personal. <laughs> Very well, Cosmo, if you insist. <laughs> but I'm not going to take it. Well, looks rather homey, don't you think, dear? You mustn't judge by appearances, Cosmo. I wouldn't think of it. I wonder how large this room is. Large? Would you like me to pace it? Will you, dear? Certainly. Nothing like a good brisk walk to tune you up. <laughs> That's what I always say. <laughs> One, two, three, four. While you're doing five, that, Mr. Moulton can show me the rest of the house. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twelve. 
13. 15. 16. Who said that? Who said what? Say, 16. Stupid. I said 13. Cheer up. George, we know when he counted you, any. Oh, stop it, will you? Stop what? Stop hiding. Where are you? Where are you? Ah, you're cold. Still cold. <laughs> ah, it's getting warmer. <laughs> See anybody? Of course you don't. We're invisible. I don't believe it. Who did that? I did. Now do you believe it? No. <laughs> yes. Well, think of your mind. What? This... This is impossible. This, this is impossible. You're repeating yourself. Maybe he has a limited vocabulary. I... I don't feel well. That's no reason to sit on my wife's lap. So <laughs> do I. I rather like it. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, isn't that funny? He does very imitation. It's just a more cosmos. I need a drink. Now you're making sense. This way, old man, I'll have a boy with a jiffy. <laughs> Very nice. Well, here I come, ready or not. Well, now, I'm ready for a drink. Materializing always does wear me out. Well, would you mind telling me just what, just, just who you are? Oh, haven't we introduced ourselves? Oh, what a shame. I'm Marion Kirby, and that, that oaf at the bar is my husband, George. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? The Kirby's? But you... You can't be the Kirby's. We can, too. But the Kirby's are dead. You said it. Dead as doornails. Oh, would you mind, old man? Thank you. <laughs> Darling? Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. You know, you must forgive me for being a bit nervous, but I have never met any ghosts before. <laughs> Don't mention it. We haven't met any alive people in quite some time either. Not since the accident. Uh, do you mind telling me exactly what happened? Not at all. A, a couple, couple of months, months ago... <laughs> a couple of months ago, it was our fifth anniversary. Congratulations. No mention. We went skiing and ran smack into an avalanche. Neil, too. Neil? Who's Neil? That's Neil. You know, Henrietta was afraid this house was haunted. Hey, you take a powder. She's not psychic, is she? Uh, I never thought so before. We don't like psychic people. They're so pushy. Always trying to meet us when we don't want to meet them. <laughs> How do you remember the medium that tried to get us to materialize when we were both taking showers? It served it right if we had. Oh, thank you, old man. It's Henrietta. There you go, being scared of her again. I'm not scared. Uh, I don't want her to be scared. <laughs> she may not quite understand about you. Well, that's simple. And look, if we should happen to materialize with anybody else around, remember, nobody can see us but you. Cosmo, why didn't you answer me? Cosmo, what's the matter? You look as though you'd see a ghost. I told you she was psychic. Shh. <laughs> what's that? Uh, I was just breathing, dear. You're acting very strange, Cosmo. Who are you talking to down here? Well, no one. I distinctly heard you talking to someone. Uh, me too. Well, you must have heard the neighbors. <laughs> it's that noisy. We certainly aren't going to take the house. Oh, not a bit noisy. The neighbors around here never talk above a whisper. Cosmo! Where did you get that drink? Oh, oh uh, drink, of course. Uh, at the bar. What bar? Over there. <laughs> I don't see any bar. <laughs> how, how, how did you do that? How did I do what? Uh, that. Uh, make that wall go up. 
What wall? I, I could have sworn. Cosmo, I told you there was something strange about this house. I think so, too. Perhaps we'd better look elsewhere, Henrietta. Coward. Nothing of the kind. I was just being sensible. But I didn't disagree with you, Cosmo. Well, folks, I think we're a little edgy on account of the former tenants. Former tenants? That's a hot one. Besides, it's too expensive. <laughs> Why, I haven't even quoted a price. He's got you there, sweetie. <laughs> Henrietta, come along, darling. Don't dawdle. We're not going to take it. Wait a minute, Mr. Topper. How do you know it's too expensive? How large is this room? <laughs> Cosmo, don't tell me you haven't measured it. But Henrietta, what on earth the use if we're not going to take the place? I haven't made up my mind one way or the other. I want to look at the kitchen. Yes, but the kitchen is this way, Mrs. Topper. Cosmo? This time, measure the room. <laughs> One. <laughs> One. Two. <laughs> Cosmo. Three. Please don't interrupt. You're oh. not happy. That's not true. Don't contradict. If she says you're not happy, you've got to be miserable. Look, would you two mind very much dematerializing or whatever you call it? <laughs> you do want to have fun, don't you? Well, yes, but... Then it's settled. Well, it, it, it may be too expensive. You leave it to us. Cosmo! I don't know what Mr. Topper will think. I never heard anything so outrageous. There's something wrong, dear. Do you know what they're asking for this house? Outrageous. Let's go. I haven't told you yet. Pay it off. We'll make you young again. How much is it? Twenty-eight thousand dollars. Out of the question. What did you tell her? Make it last. After all, Mr. Topper, the Kirby's agreed to pay almost twice that amount. We did not. They did not. Huh? How do you know? <laughs> We paid 27. They paid 27. Cosmo, how do you know? Well, well I, uh, well, as a matter of fact, I, I looked up the deed in the county clerk's office. Stout fellow. When did you do that? None of your business. That's telling him. Well, I, uh, might have been mistaken, but... Cosmo, I never thought you could be so smart. You must have looked it up before you came here. I ought to report you to the Board of Fair Trade. See what happens, Topper? You've only been with us ten minutes and already your wife's beginning to respect you. Think what would happen in twenty minutes. Well, if uh, what you say is true, I could cut the price a trifle. Uh, I'll give you twenty thousand. Twenty thousand? What's more, that's for the furniture. Oh. Cosmo, I'm not sure. Oh, I'm sure. Not a cent more. Uh, but, Mr. Topper, a house in this condition... It's in terrible condition. It's in terrible condition. What? Carry the plaster starting to scale, George. Get busy. The plaster starting to scale. Where? Over there, on the mantel. Over there, on the mantel. Look. 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 I'll show you how wrong you are. Look, I'll make a deal with you. If it isn't flooded, you get your 20,000. If it is, the house goes for 16. Mr. Topper, you've just lost yourself some money. George, come to the cellar. Get the whole house away. This way. Is it okay? I said it was a deal. Okay. All set, Topper. <laughs> Bet she's as dry as Kansas. <laughs> Did you do that? Of course not. I didn't 
Sold for sixteen thousand. <laughs> You didn't have time to measure the room. Oh, Cosmo, you're wonderful. Oh, there's nothing really. Let's go home and start packing right away. What is it, dear? Something else wrong? No, no, everything's fine. Goodbye, darling. Tell you we'll be an old man. Henrietta, I'm beginning to feel young. Why, Cosmo. You are beginning to feel young. <laughs> Let's give him a bravo and put him to bed, honey. A John W. Lupton, Bernard L. Schubert production. Produced by John W. Lupton. Starring Anne Jeffries, Robert Sterling, and Leo G. Carroll.